I've noticed that a horse neighing sounds very similar to like a machine gun. Hair! Like, I don't know. <laughs> Dutch horses make different sounds. Oh, what's it, what does a Dutch horse say? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was really good. See, that's what I'm trying to do. And this is, this is all I got. Scene one, take one, Colin Mark. Hey, all you Firebase developers. Welcome to another episode of Ask Firebase, the show where we answer your burning Firebase questions. I'm your host, Jen Person, and today my co-host is Frank Van Poffelen. Hey, everyone. Also known as Puff. That's me. So I like the burning Firebase questions in there, by the way. You know, it came out once and now I just it just stuck. I really yeah, enjoy it. That's a really good I, one. I enjoy any kind of play on words, honestly. More. Are you ready for your first question? More questions. Bring them, bring them, bring them. So our next question comes from Travology on Twitter, and I know it says, hey, uh, ask you Mike, but... Yeah, Mike is a bit busy right now. We swear he's he's doing well, but busy. So yeah. I'll take this one for him. Cool, thank you. Any insight into what <clears throat> makes a Firebase download URL unguessable? Is there just too many possible outcomes? Any restrictions on attempts? Or, you know, what? Why is it unguessable? Ah, that's a good one. Let's let's do a simple one, right? I'm gonna try and think of a number between one and five, and you need to guess it. Okay. So, go for it. Four. No. Two. No. Whatever I say, you're just gonna say no until I no, get the no, last one. No, 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 that's Okay, okay. One. No, you're really, okay. Five. You really have one number. No right way! <laughs> okay, so you're saying it was three. It was actually indeed number okay. three. It really looks like we planned Let's this, do this one again. Are you serious? <laughs> I'll pick whatever you know, numbers that you say the second, I guess. <laughs> like, it really was three. No, that's, like, see, it, that's true. You like, Okay. You, I mean, honestly, you proved it. So I'm going to pick a number between one and five. Okay. And I want you to guess it. Okay. Go. Three. See, you guessed it at the first one. So now we're going to do another guess, right? Okay. I'm going to pick a number between one and 100,000. Go. 5,280. No. Right. We're going to be here a minute. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And this is the reason that actually storage uh, download URLs are unguessable. What we've done is we've added a very long random number at the end. And the number is so long that you cannot reasonably guess it. right? And that means that if somebody wants to find the image, right, they have to first know the path to the image. And then they have to guess a, uh, what was it, a 128-bit string that we have there. So that's two to the 128th bits of randomness, as we call it. So that's, let's see, 3.4. I actually don't even know how many zeros we have in there. Right? That's a huge number. And the chances of guessing that number on your first try or on any try are actually pretty much zero. Even if you're setting up some sort of function that just does it through a brute force approach, I hope you're willing to wait um, a few hundred years. Yeah, exactly. And you will see that we do this a lot, actually, in Firebase, right? Um, let me see, for example, uh, push IDs in the real-time database yeah. are also just random numbers, but also with like a lot of bits of randomness. Or uh, let's see, document IDs in Cloud Firestore are also just GUIDs, right? Just globally unique identifiers. So there's yeah, no chance that somebody can, can reasonably guess the download URL of your images. And that's why they are safe to share. And if someone does guess, they should probably play the lottery as well. That's actually a good one. It's probably better than finding the image on cloud storage for your project. That's true. It's, yeah, statistically, it's probably easier to win the lottery. That's a good wow. one, actually. Since you guessed my number three in, in one go, maybe we should actually find some scratchers. Yeah, what are we even doing here? Let's just uh, let's go win the lottery. Three was the number. You're always ready for the next one. Of course. <laughs> OK, so our next question comes from Luke. Who wants to know, are we charged for validate reads in the real-time database? Ooh, good question, Luke. Um, so validate reads right, are part of Firebase's security rules. And we run those on the server whenever somebody accesses the data. right? And in the validate, it's when they write the data. So the simple answer is no. Actually, in the real-time database, you are not charged for any of the operations by security rules. So um, it doesn't matter if you need to access other data. It's just uh, it's included in the charge that we do for other operations. So no specific charges for, for um, reads in your um, security rules. This is uh, different, though, from Cloud Firestore. In Cloud Firestore, we have a new rule system, and we give you a lot more uh, abilities. But that does mean that you will be charged when you read a document from somewhere else in the database. So say that you store something like um, a group membership in a separate uh, set of documents in the database. Then if you need to read that group membership to uh, verify if a user has access to a certain collection, then you will be charged for the reading of that document. Which is why I am 
always trying to champion using Firebase auth custom claims. Now, there are some certain situations where if you have um, someone's going to be a member of a whole lot of groups or something like that, where probably the um, just storing that in the database is better. But otherwise, adding a little bit of information to the uh, Firebase auth token can enable you to um, identify in your rules what people can access without having to read the database every time. Yep. Also, it works in cloud storage, cloud Firestore, and real-time database. So you can secure those rules across um, all three of those, which I think is especially important for cloud storage. Sometimes people ask, like, well, I have this information in Firestore about what groups these people are in, but I can't access that from yep. cloud storage rules. So yeah. definitely look into that. Yeah, that's a great reason indeed to use um, uh, custom claims in your tokens. But a reading from a document, also a totally valid option. Absolutely. So, so just divide, try them both. Yeah, and, and again, see what works best for you. If you got a whole bunch of groups that someone's going to be a part of, probably best to uh, use the Firestore or whatever database to store them, because you do have a limit in the number of custom claims you have. That's actually such a good question that we covered it in one of our talks at the Firebase Summit last year. So we're going to include a link in the description down below to find out more. And the video is called Five Quick Tips for Securing Your Firebase App. We have yet another question. Are you ready? Yes, let's bring these on. Just like rapid firing them. You're like ready to go. Of Love course. it. Garrett K says, is there a different way I can select random documents in Cloud Firestore? Well, I don't know what the original way was that was proposed, but there are a few ways that you can select random documents. And this one is actually interesting because I did not come up with the answer. I had to learn this one from Dan McGrath, who's the product manager for Cloud Firestore. And he gave a great answer in Stack Overflow. So we'll also link that in the description below. But there's roughly two approaches. And um, I'll start with the simplest one, which is not the one that I initially uh, was using. It's definitely not the one that most people start with. And the simplest one is actually when you create a document, insert a random value in that document. So just do math.random if you're using JavaScript. You get a value between 0 and 1. Right? And it doesn't really matter what it is. Just store it in the document. Now, if you do that for all your documents, then write each document has a random value. So now when you want to query and find a random document, you, in your client side code, determine a random value between 0 and 1 again. And then you say, order on the random field. Start at the random value that you've calculated. So you have your collection, you order it on the random on the field that has the random value, and then you start at the uh, random value that you've calculated, and then you just limit it to one document. And if you do that, you get a random document. It's actually really quite simple once you have the right data structure in place, which is fairly common on NoSQL databases. Yeah. You know, I actually used a very similar strategy when Hiranya and I gave our talk mm -hmm. on incorporating uh, Firebase into your existing backend infrastructure. Cool. So, uh, you know, I worked on the front end, which shows just like a series of movies. And I really wanted it to show like a random series of movies every time. So each time you come in, you could be like, oh, I've seen that. Um, I'll review it. I, I want to see this. I'll add it to, you know, you know my, my viewing list so I can check it out later. Um, and so, we got the information from TMDB, the movie database. Mm -hmm. And each of those has a unique identifier. I believe there are like all maybe four digits or something. Okay. So I used that similarly. I, I generated a random number between whatever it was, 1 and 0 and 10,000. And then I would start at that particular value and, and go from there. And then it seemed to work very well. Yeah. I was a little worried on stage because it's absolutely every movie that like <laughs> something might come up when I clicked refresh. But it seemed to work really well. Yeah, no, I can totally get that. And that actually, right, you know the range of numbers that you have, which is the thing that in you this case you would to need. Have it. Yeah. yeah, and that's why if you do a random number, right, just do math.random, it's a number between 0 and 1, right? And that means that you know the range. Um, so, but it's not a whole number, which is in your case, it was right. a whole number. Yes, because I, I it, it just already happened to have that field. But I think yeah. if I didn't have some unique identifier of each movie, I would do something like what you're describing. Did you have to show a single movie or multiple movie, multiple movie? movies? Multiple so movies. So I would how be did like, you do that? I, I just said like start at and you know ordering ah. at it descending. Right. So you um, so you got one random number right in the client and then you streamed the results from that right. So you took that one and the next two IDs. Probably, exactly. Right? Yeah. So it's like a small amount of time. So the, sure, there is the possibility that I could pick the exact 
last movie, but mm. it, it's pretty unlikely. Yeah, the thing there is, right, you get a sequence, and yes. if you would ever get the same random number again, you would get the same sequence. That's true. Which was fine for your app, apparently. If yeah. that is not fine for, for the app that you are building, then you would actually have to generate a new random number for each Every of them. Every single one. But keep in mind, Cloud Firestore is quite efficient at retrieving these types of documents with multiple calls. So it's not a performance problem normally. Cool. Hey, Jen, the next question is for you. Oh, wow. Mohit Hatze says on Twitter, Frank from Puffalin is my favorite DevRel person. That's not a question, but I like the statement. And he answers Firebase-related questions from Twitter and Stack Overflow on a YouTube channel. Love his personality, hashtag Ask Firebase. What? T tell me, I just Jen. wanted to include that. <laughs> Thank you. I thought that was really thoughtful. Um, we really appreciate having uh, Puff on the team as well, and he is just invaluable. We, we could not do what we do without you. So absolutely love it. Thanks for your feedback. And I was like, if you're going nice, to be on the show, nice, I might nice, as well nice. throw it up there. Thank you, Mohit. I, uh, I honestly appreciate it. Um, answering questions is tip typically my favorite part of the day. So, But uh, thank you for the recognition. And thanks for the shout out. Much appreciated. And thank you for coming on yet again. It's, it's so wonderful to have you on here. We done already? Yeah, that's it. OK. And thank all of you for your questions. We really can't make the show without you. So when you have some sort of Firebase question, be sure to put it on social media with the hashtag Ask Firebase, and who knows? Maybe you'll see Puff answering it on a future episode. That would be cool. Yeah. And if you like the content that you see here, subscribe to the Firebase YouTube channel, where you can see all sorts of other cool shows as well. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on a future episode. Ding, ding, ding. I'm just like, I actually like, I'm just making up another song. That's like not even how it goes.